One. You hear a news item about a man who has just been given an award. Why was he given the award? A, for shooting a man. B, for holding up a restaurant. C, for catching a robber. Local newspaper reporter Alan Francis made the news himself when he tackled an armed robber and has now been given the Queen's Award for bravery. Mr. Francis saw a man armed with a shotgun holding up customers at a restaurant in Putney two years ago. He threw himself at the man, pulled him to the ground, and even though the shotgun went off, held on to him until the police arrived. The robber Frank Mellin has been jailed for eight years. Local newspaper reporter Alan Francis made the news himself when he tackled an armed robber and has now been given the Queen's Award for bravery. Mr. Francis saw a man armed with a shotgun holding up customers at a restaurant in Putney two years ago. He threw himself at the man, pulled him to the ground, and even though the shotgun went off, held on to him until the police arrived. The robber Frank Mellin has been jailed for eight years. Two. You hear an announcement. You have left your car in the car park for forty minutes. How much will you pay? A. Nothing. B. Fifty p. C. One pound. We remind customers that our large car park is at the rear of the store. There is no charge for any stay of less than 30 minutes. After that time, however, there will be a charge of 50p up to the first hour, and one pound for a stay of one to three hours. Anyone who leaves their car for longer than three hours may have their vehicle towed away. We remind customers that our large car park is at the rear of the store. There is no charge for any stay of less than 30 minutes. After that time, however, there will be a charge of 50p up to the first hour, and one pound for a stay of one to three hours. Anyone who leaves their car for longer than three hours may have their vehicle towed away. Three. You hear two men talking. Where are they? A. In a factory. B. In a garage. C. In a supermarket. That looks better than the last time I saw it, Terry. Thanks, Bob. But it was bound to look bad having run into the back of a bus at forty miles an hour. But now it's got new wings, radiator, bonnet, and headlamps. Of course, it looks better. Can I drive it away now? Not now. I need to get the front wheels back on and check them. Can you call back in an hour? No problem. I'll just do some shopping. That looks better than the last time I saw it, Terry. Thanks, Bob. But it was bound to look bad having run into the back of a bus at forty miles an hour. But now it's got new wings, radiator, bonnet, and headlamps. Of course, it looks better. Can I drive it away now? Not now. I need to get the front wheels back on and check them. Can you call back in an hour? No problem. I'll just do some shopping. Four. You hear two women called Vera and Jane talking. What does Vera think of Tony? A, he's talkative. B, he's polite. C, he's mean. How did your date go last night, Vera? It was okay. I suppose I had quite a nice time. But Tony is so good-looking, and he's rich. I know all that, Jane. And I know lots of girls like him, but he was really rude to the waiters in the restaurant. I felt so embarrassed. And what was surprising is that he's not very generous. I had to pay for my own meal. He was boring too. He only talked about himself. Will you see him again? No way. How did your date go last night, Vera? It was okay. I suppose I had quite a nice time. But Tony is so good-looking, 
and he's rich. I know all that, Jane, and I know lots of girls like him. But he was really rude to the waiters in the restaurant. I felt so embarrassed. And what was surprising is that he's not very generous. I had to pay for my own meal. He was boring too. He only talked about himself. Will you see him again? No way. Five. You hear part of a university lecture. Which subject is the lecture about? A. Law. B. Medicine. C. History. Another factor contributing to the Industrial Revolution was the movement of people from the countryside to the towns. A law had been passed preventing people from keeping their animals on common land, and that, together with the absence of any form of assistance for the poor, forced country people to move to the towns to look for work. There, they suffered terrible diseases, but they had no money to go to hospital or see a doctor. This is thought to be a different period in the country's past. Another factor contributing to the Industrial Revolution was the movement of people from the countryside to the towns. A law had been passed preventing people from keeping their animals on common land, and that, together with the absence of any form of assistance for the poor, forced country people to move to the towns to look for work. There, they suffered terrible diseases, but they had no money to go to hospital or see a doctor. This is thought to be a different period in the country's past. 6. You hear an introduction on a TV show. What kind of show is it? A. A documentary. B. A game show. C. A chat show. And today's guest has come a long way from her humble beginnings. She was born in 1906 in Sunderland next to the dockyards. When she was eight, her father was killed in the First World War. Her family then lived in poverty, and to pay for her clothes to go to school, she would get up at four o'clock in the morning to deliver milk. And after school, she worked in a local shop until ten at night. Dame Peggy Mansfield, how did winning a scholarship to Oxford University change your life? And today's guest has come a long way from her humble beginnings. She was born in 1906 in Sunderland next to the dockyards. When she was eight, her father was killed in the First World War. Her family then lived in poverty, and to pay for her clothes to go to school, she would get up at four o'clock in the morning to deliver milk. And after school, she worked in a local shop until ten at night. Dame Peggy Mansfield, how did winning a scholarship to Oxford University change your life? Seven. You hear a radio announcement. Who is Mr. Hill? A. A hospital patient. B. A criminal. C. A holiday maker. Here is an urgent message for Mr. Gordon Hill of Braintree in Essex. Will Mr. Gordon Hill of Braintree in Essex, who is on a touring holiday in Scotland, please contact Maidenhead Hospital or the nearest police station. Mr Hill's mother is dangerously ill and the hospital would like him to get in touch with them as soon as possible. The telephone number is 0412 640 9867. I'll repeat that. The telephone number of Maidenhead Hospital is 0412 640 9867. And now our regular six o'clock programme. Here is an urgent message for Mr Gordon Hill of Braintree in Essex. Will Mr Gordon Hill of Braintree in Essex, who is on a touring holiday in Scotland, please contact Maidenhead Hospital or the nearest police station. Mr Hill's mother is dangerously ill and the hospital would like him to get in touch with them as soon as possible. The telephone number is 0412 640 9867. I'll repeat that. The telephone number of Maidenhead Hospital is 0412 Six four zero nine eight six seven, and now our regular six o'clock program.
Eight. You hear a woman talking to her husband. What will she buy? A. Dog food. B. Olive oil. C. Cheese. Bread, butter, vitamin tablets. I've got them on the list. Have we got cheese? No, I'll write it down. Some cheddar cheese. What else do we need? Have we got olive oil? Yes, plenty of that. What about dog food? You know the dog doesn't eat dog food from the supermarket. But I'm only going to the supermarket. I haven't got time to go into town to get him meat from the butchers. You'll have to do that. Okay, I'll do that. Bread, butter, vitamin tablets. I've got them on the list. Have we got cheese? No, I'll write it down. Some cheddar cheese. What else do we need? Have we got olive oil? Yes, plenty of that. What about dog food? You know the dog doesn't eat dog food from the supermarket. But I'm only going to the supermarket. I haven't got time to go into town to get him meat from the butchers. You'll have to do that. Okay, I'll do that.